Added sugar actually blocks the body's ability to synthesize protein into muscle. Spending big bucks on protein supplements? If they have added sugar, they're probably hurting, not enhancing, your ability to build lean muscle. By reducing the impact of sugar, this plan will keep your muscles younger and stronger, protecting you from injury and helping you burn fat faster and more efficiently. 6. You'll feel more energized. By slowing your body's absorption of carbohydrates, you'll keep your body and your brain more fully fueled all the time, beating both general physical fatigue and the brain fog that can often accompany it. You'll no longer need to make poor food choices as a way of getting quick energy, and you won't be dragging through those afternoon hours. Raising Sugar Cane You can see why I had to write this book. In fact, for the past two decades, I have been investigating the secrets of the food industry. And I've gotten tired of marketers trying to blame us, the American people, for the obesity crisis. In 2002, I published a controversial New York Times op-ed in defense of a group of kids who were suing McDonald's for making them fat. A lot of people thought I was nuts. Suing McDonald's for making you fat is like suing Porsche for making you get a speeding ticket but at least that Porsche comes with a speedometer. Fifteen years ago, the idea of there being calorie counts and nutrition information for restaurant food was unheard of. There was absolutely no way of knowing how many calories were in that Big Mac. And as I pointed out, if you drive down any highway in America, it's a lot easier to find a set of golden arches than it is a place to buy a grapefruit. That op-ed was the beginning salvo in what has become a career-long crusade. When I wrote The Abs Diet in 2004, I dedicated it to every American who has taken up arms in the battle against obesity. I explained why counting calories while you diet and exercise wasn't the way to lose weight. Simply put, it takes far too long to burn off 300 calories and no time at all to eat them back up. Instead, I focused on quality nutrition and the importance of boosting metabolism long before boost your metabolism became a catchphrase. But it wasn't until I launched Eat This, Not That in 2007 that real change began to happen. The first of nearly 20 books in the Eat This, Not That franchise said it all in the dedication. When my co-author Matt Goulding and I called out Applebee's, Olive Garden, Outback, Red Lobster, and TGI Fridays for concealing their nutritional information, Today, each and every one provides full nutritional data for all their offerings. At first, food manufacturers hated me. But soon, they began to change their tune. When we ran a blog in 2008 exposing Baskin Robbins for producing a 2,310 calorie Heath Bar milkshake, the company followed up by scrapping the drink, as well as its entire line of premium shakes. Jamba Juice unveiled a line of high-fructose corn syrup-free drinks in 2009, and CEO James White cited Eat This, Not That as the inspiration for the move. A few months later, Gatorade and Hunts took steps to reduce HFCS, and by the end of that year, HFCS consumption in the United States began to drop for the first time in 30 years. Few movements have changed the way we eat more than Eat This, Not That. From the world of nutritional mystery I first wrote about in 2002, we emerged in 2015 to a new day, when the FDA at last required calorie counts to be displayed in all chain restaurants and movie theaters, long after most restaurants, under pressure from ticked-off consumers, had already made the move voluntarily. But knowing what you're eating is only part of the battle. How and when to eat is also important. I wrote The 8-Hour Diet in 2012 in response to shocking new research about longevity and how the timing of our meals could dramatically extend our lives, flatten our bellies, and reduce our risk of diabetes. And in 2013, I began tracking breakthrough research emerging out of Europe about nutrigenics, the study of how our genes interact with our food in ways that determine whether or not our fat genes get triggered. The book that resulted from that research, Zero Belly Diet, became one of the biggest books of 2015, and it solved...